Hey there friends, Dave Polite, Skinny and Missing Project. Got ready to audition for a video channel. Thanks for being here. Huck is laying at my feet as we talk, sleeping. She wants to be right there. This is a letters only segment. <clears throat> so if you're looking for missing people, move on. You're looking for the news, move on. This is what you've been asking for. I know many of you have asked for it, so been a little remiss, but I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay, Dave, I found your internet site about a year ago after my son took his life. I would like to thank you, sir. You have done so much with helping me in my recovery from the loss of my son. And every time you cry on your videos, I cry too, because it is extremely emotional to watch. The loss of our sons can be seen and felt in your tears. I wanted to thank you for letting me cry with you. I still close the bedroom door, but I cry. And the tears I shed seem to be helping me with the awful acceptance you're teaching me I need to deal with and how to live with it. Thank you, Mr. Politis. To see every episode of everything you do is my goal. And it seems like an excellent source of adult therapy when I need it most of my life and was provided you in the anonymity of my house at no charge. You spread the message of putting out good karma and doing something good for somebody somehow each day. And for over a year, I have done that, Mr. Politis. It's not easy, but it's so damn rewarding and fulfilling to my soul. And I also find it very beneficial to my mental comeback from the very dark place I'm sure you are aware of. You've taught me it is nothing to be ashamed of to cry. Especially over the suicide of my son. So much of this going on, so much of this. You and I grew up in a time when it was not socially acceptable to see grown men cry. I'd like to thank you for so effectively shattering that myth for possibly hundreds and thousands of men like myself. Sincerely. You know, I go to a lot of places. I'm out in the public a lot, I don't hide. And a lot of people come up and talk to me about a lot of things. Bigfoot, missing people, the news, mental health. And Angie and I have talked about, why did we get into this? Why are we here? What's, what's been put on our shoulders to carry? And I've had quite a few young people say, Dave, I'm only here because of you. You saved my life. You convinced me not to take my life because of all the harm I'd do to my family if I did commit suicide. I really don't know what to say. I get a lot of very kind letters. I'm very grateful for that. And many of you may not believe this, but honestly, if I can help someone like this man, if his son knew how much it destroyed his life, how much it meant to his dad, that life, would he have done it? Hey Dave, I was just now watching your most recent segment of letters from July 16th. I wanted very much to tell you that I thoroughly enjoy the manner in which you make your videos. I'm very much interested in what you refer to as a good solid, as good solid content. It is because of that content that I watch your videos, but I'm especially appreciative of the way you do your videos. 
Perhaps I'm a little different from the letter writer who suggested that you glitz them up and somehow in order to appeal to more people. In fact, I would be far less inclined to watch and to listen in attentively to them if you were to change your presentation. Much of my enjoyment comes from the fact that the content itself is so solid, so straightforward, so unembellished, and so free of glitzy flourishes and attention-getting gimmicks. If you were to alter this, you would certainly detract from the value of the information you present. Please keep up the good work. Thank you. I think some of you <laughs> may think I'm not very talented, not very adept at doing some things. Making a good movie, missing 411, the UFO connection, takes years, takes 60, 70 hour weeks, takes valuable time away from family and friends. And when I first started to do these videos, I told myself that if it's going to be a big undertaking, if it's going to be hugely time consuming, if I have to go edit for hours on end, I won't do it. So I do these on one take. I take them, download them on my computer, and then upload them onto YouTube. There's no delay. I don't do anything to it. I don't cut out things that may be embarrassing. I don't I don't try to glitz it up. And I think there's a hardcore group of people that appreciate that. And if you're looking for all the glitz and glamour of a Hollywood production, then I suggest you go watch my three, three movies. Because that's what they are. Next one. Hello, Mr. Politis. I've received my first two missing 411 books. My sticker, my Bigfoot sighting map of Northern California, and I am so pleased with all of them. After reading The Hoopa Project and Tribal Bigfoot, I just want to let you know that I was on the fence about Bigfoot. But those two books have knocked me completely off the fence, and I am a 100% Bigfoot believer. Your writing skills are captivating, and Harvey Pratt's artwork is astounding. He makes me want to be a Bigfoot friend. I do have a, an acquaintance that lives in Ashland, Oregon, that told me about a friend of his that was walking along the banks of the Klamath River and saw some Bigfoot tracks going into the water. He took some pictures and showed them to my friend. And he said that you can see the prints going into the water. Well, if you want to share them, send them to me. And that's Can-Am, like Canadian-American, Can-Am missing at yahoo.com. What do you think about the New Mexico National Park Service putting up Bigfoot warning signs with the do's and don'ts if anyone happens to see a Bigfoot in Taos? That was all a hoax. How do I know it was a hoax? Because the U.S. Forest Service bulletin they put up, the address on the bottom and things, it was all from California. It had a California address, so or California directions. I don't know, maybe the channel just needed hits on their digital side and their digital editor just did it, but if you look on that, that New Mexico channel that put it up, they have not one point of contact on their station. It was all a hoax. I just wanted to let you know how much I enjoy your books. Got my sticker on my truck and a map on my wall. I'm a happy camper. Well, thank you. And people that have the map on their wall, I appreciate that. Over the months, people have it. Sometimes people have this, oh, hey, look at that. And they send me what they see in the map. I appreciate that. Because everyone sees a little something different on the missing person map. Next one. Hey Dave, I apologize for the long delay in responding back to you. I must say that I completely understand. I remember when watching some of your videos when you talked about having to hire security for yourself when you went to certain speaking engagements. I must say that personally I do not understand that kind of thinking. Just because someone has a difference of opinion than you that they want to resort to personal threats and even violence to attack someone. To me, the world would be a better place without people like that. I just have so many things that I would like to talk to you about that talking on the phone would make it a lot easier. However, I do understand that emailing is much easier. 
please let me apologize in advance because I have a lot of questions and some of my emails may get quite long. But please do not feel like you have to answer everything at once. Let me answer one thing. Probably once a week I get an email from somebody saying, hey, I need to talk to you. Here's my phone number. It's too long to put. We learned a long time ago not to call anybody we don't know personally. A couple of times early on, we got stalked, criminally stalked, and had to get the police involved. There's a lot of psychos out there, <laughs> really. And they never admit that they're, gonna, that they're a psycho. They're never going to admit they have mental health problems. They're never going to admit they might want to hurt me or Angie or Huck. But we have to be careful. And being careful means I'll email and talk to you that way. If that's not enough, I'm sorry, but I'm not calling. First of all, I've seen plenty of documentaries and I've read plenty of stories about Bigfoot and Bigfoot sightings and also stories of people claiming to have spent time with Bigfoot. In those stories, there were people who claimed that Bigfoot had red eyes, while others claimed that Bigfoot had green eyes. So my first question would be, just what is, in your opinion, the red eye, green eye difference? <laughs> I have no idea. I really have no idea. Remember this. Someone claims to be a Bigfoot expert. Someone puts himself on stage and claims to have all the answers, turn around and leave. Person's nuts. There are no experts out there. Also, there are many stories of Bigfoot who help people and stories of Bigfoot who are very aggressive and want to hurt people. One story that I read told of a person who met a Bigfoot and gained their trust and was welcomed into their group and over time had learned to communicate with them and was told that there are actually two different fractions of them there are ones that hate humans and ones that want to hurt them. And there are ones who do not hate humans and do trust them. So my next question to you would be, what is your thoughts on the difference between friendly and hostile? Also, I've heard that there are those that say that the ones with red eyes are the hostile ones. When I first started out in Bigfoot, and I wrote my first two books, Hoopa Project and Tribal Bigfoot, there was almost nothing out there about Bigfoot hurting people. Really? The Missing 411 books came out and they gave some people uh, some credibility in their Bigfoot research, they thought. They thought I was referring to Bigfoot. Never did. And then they started to extrapolate and make stories up about Bigfoot hurting people or trying to hurt people. Truthfully, I, don't, I discount every one of those stories and if you listen to those channels, those people don't use their full name, don't say where they work, where they were from, how you can vet the story. I've known two people now that work for some that had worked for some of the Bigfoot channels, the biggest ones out there, who have quit, and they quit in the past because the people owning those channels and writing those stories made them all up. Yeah, made them all up. <laughs> So, now do I believe the old Native American stories about a Bigfoot possibly taking a female? No reason not to believe that. But as far as purposely hurting them, uh, I'd like to thank you because of you. I got turned into reading more stories from Native Americans and going back to reading stories from a time before modern media came back in the 19th and late 18th century. Back then, those stories were told and printed just as they were told without modern bull inserted them. Giddy up. One story that I remember happened at a time involved a man who lived out in the wilderness with his wife in a log cabin. It may have even been one of those stories that you read on your Bigfoot series. Anyway, the man actually had two wives, and one evening they were all getting ready for bed and went to sleep. The next thing that happened is the man wakes up, and before it got cold, all of a sudden in the house, so he got up to look around finds that one of his wife's rooms had a huge hole in the wall. She was gone. I've never heard that story. I didn't read it. And I'm not sure if I'd ever believe that. The man told his other wife to look after the children. He went into the woods, followed the tracks, find his missing wife. After tracking for a few hours, he finally came upon them. The Bigfoot had a fire going, and over the fire on a stick was his wife being roasted. Okay, he got the facts a little wrong. 
This happened in Northern California, late 1800s. And the story is, is that a Bigfoot came into camp, took a woman, went up to the hillside, and was getting to cook her, getting ready to cook her. The fire gave away the location. And it was at about that time that the natives thought that Bigfoot stopped using fire because they realized that's how they were being found. So Dave, this is all for now and I'll be looking forward to hearing your reply. And like I said, I don't feel like you have to answer everything all at once. I get that. So, give me the best I could. Next one. Hey Dave, I felt compelled to write to you after your, most, after your recent video regarding Henry Meaden. That was a good, that was a good segment. We've had lots of these cases now, the similarities are indeed mounting. About a lifetime of unusual experiences, I wanted to write to you about light orbs and something falling into place in my mind, which may be part of the missing 411 solution. Historically, you have not supposed solution to the cases, simply stating, I don't know. However, with your latest film and this video uploaded concerning Henry, I have started to provide a glimpse into your thoughts of what could happen. It's very interesting and adds another layer to these matters. So, in the movie Missing 411, The UFO Connection, I started to connect some of the dots. And it wasn't that I was trying to be aloof or not be honest. It's I'm not going to say things that are a giant leap. With that movie and the facts, it's hard not to say what happened to these people. And if I see other similarities in older cases, I'll bring them up. Something we seem to hear an awful lot about is orbs, lights, and similar phenomena. I was listening to a discussion between Roger Penrose and Jordan Peterson about the Big Bang Theory. The topic of light was part of that, photons, and the point being said that the light has no mass and therefore has no concept of time. If we could assume that certain entities can express themselves in their purest form, that of light, and then perhaps we can deduce that they too can be distinct from time. Time travelers, so to speak. The concept of physical beings existing as light is relevant to the Buddhist tradition of enlightenment, where the quote, the rainbow body, end of quotes, becomes a reality. This has actually been observed several times. Our own Lord also says, I am the light. I believe we are all essentially light beings. Our souls are occupying our bodies to experience this life. There's much to dwell on in these thoughts, but if orbs are beings which can come and go and take and leave from a time period to another time period, irrelevant to their existence, but different and therefore relevant to our existence as our bodies contain mass, then some aspects of your cases make sense. For example, the reemergence of bodies in places already searched. The orbs seen in close proximity to missing cases and other perhaps and other matters perhaps. This is enough for now. A Lancaster bomber just flew overhead. I think the last remaining flying example in the UK, somewhat of a blast from the past in itself. Your friend on the east coast of Scotland. Thank you. I'm grateful for any friends. <laughs> Next letter. Hey Dave, why are NASA and the DOT, DOD stonewalling Congress in the UFO investigations? Well, if they really cared about humanity and the humans being taken, one would think that they would cooperate. Well, if you think our government cares about you, I think that's where we need to start because I don't think they do. I really don't think that the majority of the people in politics care about you and me. It comes back to their decision making. I truly believe that government employees think they own that information, not you and me, even though we own it legally. And that it's a control mechanism. If they can control the information, then they can control how you and me think. And if they can make up stories to fit what they want you to believe, then they may be doing that. But here it is again, the old issue of corruption entering the picture. They, in my humble opinion, are deeply involved 
if not complicit with the cabal that is running 300 foot discs abducting human beings as slaves and drug and gun running down in the Philippines. As a former Marine testified on June 12th, and they benefit by trading human slaves with ETs as they get exotic technology in return, then type of tech that would allow someone to rule the world. The people in government who are corrupt to the core are doing their best to derail the investigation and throw it off track because there is very, they are very heinous and nefarious activity going on and they don't want it exposed. And some of the people that are the highest positions of power and influence with both private and public, the idea that any person has his or her price is a new one. It sickens me to know that they are volunteering their lives of other human beings for a slave trade in exchange for technologies. The black budget is very real. Phil Schneider told us in 1980s that no one was listening. Just think of all the people who tried to tell us the truth, who were made to be fools, lost their careers or lives, and were killed in the game of secrecy. If humanity wants to progress to becoming galactic, there can be no secrecy at all. The Pleiadians, DNA, and brain functions are the 80% range. They have telepathy and know what others are thinking. We were seeded by them, and that is our destiny. If we can make it, perhaps when you know that others are thinking, there are no secrets. Perhaps they have a peaceful world. We, on the other hand, are steeped in secrecy, so much so that no one knows the truth about anything. I know something. I know that every day when I wake up and I come downstairs, there was one dog right there that is happy to see me. Every morning I come downstairs, I sit down in the family room, she comes down, lays down between my legs, <laughs> rolls over and says, Daddy, give me a belly rub. Every morning I can count on that. It may, may be the most simplistic reasons that she loves me, but she wants that belly rub. Okay, next one. Hey Dave, I appreciate all you do. Please give Huck some ear rubs. Best executive producer ever. Dog loves ear rubs. Belly rubs and ear rubs, I'm telling you. I recently had the opportunity to watch Missing 411 The Hunted and Missing 411 The UFO Connection. And of course, I left five star reviews on Amazon. They were both compelling, haunting, and well done. I expected no less, to be honest. Ugh, pressure, pressure. I write to you to add an idea to your cache of information on the missing. I'll attempt to be as brief as possible, but I think my experience may be thought provoking. At seven days old, I had my first of what we used to call a grand mall seizure. You guys remember what those were? They call them something else now. I had seizures until I went through puberty and doctors could not explain why. I had them or why my epilepsy went dormant. There are a couple other curious things about me. I've never been able to wear a watch. I kill the battery. No matter the kind of watch. If it has a battery, I'll kill it within a few days. I also have what doctors call tinnitus. But mine is different. The rings are different in different locations and experiences. My grandmother, who was a Crow Indian and grew up on a reservation, said the women of our family could hear earth song. And indeed, both she and my mom had the same ringing. As an adult who has studied much about strangeness, I could adapt that to I hear frequencies that other people do not. My entire life, I have had paranormal experiences, orbs, UAPs, shadow people. I've witnessed much. About seven years ago, I started getting pain in my joints as well as insomnia, depression, and various other ailments. I work in tech support, so I presume it was tendonitis and stress. I saw many professionals and went back and forth between a multitude of professional explanations, but nothing anyone did provided relief. My favorite thing is research and the pursuit of truth. So I started digging. I came to a website or forum where people were talking about electro hypersensitivity. Now in several countries, they have accepted this as a real diagnosis and a disability. Alas, not in the US. You've probably heard of radio sickness from back in the days of the Cold War. It's basically the same, except now we are bombarded with radio frequency and EMF radiation. This is true. 
So being technically minded, I tested the theory. Nothing else worked, why not? I bought a router, you could turn off, and I got my first full night's sleep in a year. That got me on the path. I went all wired and basically reduced the use of my cell phone and now all of my symptoms are 90% better. Hoorah! It's not easy, but there is hope for us. We just have to do a lot of research when deciding on a place to live, forgo the modern wireless conveniences and steer clear of populated places where everyone has a wireless device beaming. Move to Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Here's a DOT connecting. A seizure is an electrical storm across the brain. Killing a battery is an electrical issue. Frequencies could also be described as electrical oscillation. When you have a paranormal experience, your hair stands on end, letting you know there's some electrical change in the atmosphere. And finally, leading up to being electro-hypersensitive. Maybe you're missing or like me, electrically, electrically or energetically different. Just a thought. I also like to share my story with people who are suffering and have no reason. There's a lot of those. I know the EHS sufferers are the canaries in the coal mine, but there may be others who have no idea that this exists. And like me, it could be an answer for them. I have to one day catch sight of a Bigfoot, and I appreciate your recommendation of the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. I really enjoyed it. Blessings to you, Angie and Huck. I think, I think that guy's on to something. We have so much EMF electrical charges around us every day. It'd be ignorant to think that it doesn't affect different people different ways. Next one, Dave. Thanks Dave for the letter segment. Well, you're welcome. That's why you're here. <laughs> I think it's a great part of what you're doing and it opens our minds to new events that are happening around us. That letter about the Bakersfield truck driver seeing all those tall aliens and feeling sick is amazing. And I still think about it. That one sounded like the truth. Truth still has a ring to it if people would listen. You may want to try letters segment the way Donovan, Re Donovan Dredd does his stuff where we just listen to you and you can put up whatever background you want, including your movie posters. There's something about that format that works well with viewers. It's something a truth storytelling thing has a deep age old resonance and so much is left for the viewers to surmise. Either way, I'll watch. I currently live in the crumbling ruined city of San Francisco where the streets are really empty and it has a very strange vibe going on. And I don't mean the crime or the homelessness or the crazy liberals. Last winter I was walking down Clay Street from Knob Hill where I live. It's a walk I take five days a week to the Safeway on Jackson Street. One early morning I was passing the pyramid and rounded the corner to what is Sansom Street and was not at Sansom Street. Turns out I was actually four blocks away on Battery Street and I felt totally disoriented as I was seeing my regular buildings from the backside. Two women were standing on the corner and one was saying to the other, quote, I don't know where we are, I'm totally lost, end of quotes. And I was in sync with them because I was blocks away from where I should have been. Did we both walk through a portal? I felt dizzy and fatigued by the time I made it to Safeway. That's pretty weird. This happened on the same day we had a record-breaking low pressure event over San Francisco and the windows blew out of the old Bank of America building. So it's important for me to hear the letters because what is going on ain't just happening in the forest or above Skinwalker Ranch. Lastly, thanks for walking the walk, old school style, letting the work speak for itself. Thank you. As I've stated many times, whatever is happening in the portal, multidimensional theory, there has to be intellect behind it. This can't be random. If it was random, we'd be walking down the streets of San Francisco and people would disappear right in front of us. But this never happens. In my research, it happens after point of separation, where there's no one around to see it. 
This is easier to happen in the middle of the woods where nobody's around. It's easier to happen when you're alone in bed in your house and people are abducted. We live in a strange place. And some people don't have an ability to open their eyes to see that this is truly happening around them. I get that. And I've met several others who have said over time, you know, if I see enough of something, it'll finally resonate with me that, okay, this is true. It's kind of what the missing 411 research. It took me a while to figure out, hey, there's a lot of canines out there that can't pick up a scent. There's a lot of weather events related to the missing. Everyone comes around at their own pace. Stay with it. If you want to read the books, go to your local library, get them. If they don't have them, ask the library to get them. They will. Watch my movies, Missing 411, Missing 411, The Hunted, and Missing 411, The UFO Connection, all available at Amazon. Thanks for being here. That is the letters segment for today. More to come. Thanks for asking for it. We'll see what the response is. See how many people actually make comments. If you like the segment, give it a two thumbs up. We'll see how many people watch this. All right. You have a great day. Pull this out.